Take off the poo poo. Take off the cloud chase. Take off the white box. Take off the money phone. Take off the car loan. Take off the flex and the white house. This is my story of how I went from $9,600 in debt to $3.4 in like three years or something. So, you know. Hi there, my name is Andel Nicholas. Welcome to my story. Welcome to my channel. Now, if you didn't know, I'm from a small Caribbean island called Trinidad and Tobago in a village of 2,500 people called Parman. Okay, and my parents, we didn't, they didn't grow up rich. My dad, after primary school, went straight into the, into the family life. And my mom, after primary school as well, she went into Silver doing trade schools. Um, she worked for rich people cleaning like their houses and you know cooking for them and so on you know so I didn't have like a golden spoon in my mouth and to now traveling the world in a few different places like Mabea Spain flew business class for the first time I've been to Sandals Resort with the love of my life for our anniversary you know spent over $52,000 on that trip also took my parents to their dream kind of vacation to Tobago yes they have never been to Tobago, right? I had my family there. It was a lovely trip. Bought my first car in cash, okay? And I also run a seven-figure marketing agency. But it wasn't always like that, so let's just take a trip down memory lane as I believe that you will find value in this. So let's start off in standard three, right? So I didn't have any kind of entrepreneurial background of, of anything of some sort. I first Started off, we used to buy Yu-Gi-Oh cards for like a dollar or something like that, all right? And I was the only one, I got the blue eyes white dragon, all right? And I was like the king of the school, and I was like, whoa, you know? And then I had the blue eyes white dragon, right? And um, people was offering me $5, you know, $4 for it, you know? And then a guy offered me $50 for that same blue eyes white dragon, right? I saw limit, obviously, of course. It's a great ROI. At this point in time, it was my first was like aha moment, you know. And honestly, too, it was a point in time getting the attention was nice because, you know, in those days, I didn't have like a shoes in the sense. Schools used to have like a bazaar and I was the only one who didn't have a shoes, you know, because a pair of shoes, I had a pair of sandals because we couldn't afford one, right? And everyone was like laughing at me or whatever because I didn't have like a pair of shoes. And then I, I remember a day, like my sister, she bought me one. When I was a champion, a white champion. I went to school, they swear fresh, you know, and um, obviously nobody paid me attention. It was like, whatever, you know, welcome. Moving on into Form 1, I passed for Fatima College, right? And at that point in time, my sister, she also, she bought me a Samsung Galaxy Pocket, right? Which is way back then. So I thought that I was a, I was a big boy. Right, so it doing so everyone else had like an had like an iPhone, so I didn't know what an iPhone was, right? And obviously, being human nature, you always want the next thing. So I went home and I asked my mom. I said, "Ma, you know, can I please have an iPhone for Christmas or whatever it was?" And then she was like, she looked me in my eye, and she told me, "Andel, I will never spend more than three hundred dollars on a phone for you," right? And I said, okay, okay, cool. So I had to figure something out, right? And then I saw a guy going into Form 2, from Form 6, whatever. He came into our classroom and he was selling gum. It was something called Sour Face at the time, right? I think it's still available. And people was like running it down, running it down. He was selling it for a dollar, right? And I used to buy that home, I mean. But it used to cost 50 cents. So seeing that, I was like, but wait, now nah, I, I could get that for, for 50 cents and people running, running this down. So that evening, I went home, went to, the, went to the parlor shop, spent like five or ten dollars. I can't remember how much exactly. And I got like, say, 10 to 20 of it. Next day, sold it for, for a dollar, made like 50, 10, 20 dollars. Right. And I was like, aha, this is it. Here comes the money. Here we go, money talk. Fast forward a few months later, going into Form 3, I bought my first iPhone 5C, a green one. I paid $3,000 for it. Uh, how I bought it, I bought it from this company who didn't have a, an, an, who didn't have a physical store. Met them in the gas station in Marva there. Paid him 3K in cash. And he watched me and was like, what is this? Because it was all in singles. 
all singles, right? 3K, 3K in singles. And he was like, what is this? I say, 3K? He was like, nah, I'm not going to count this. I say, well, are you? But it's 3K. And he's like, all right, cool. And, and that was it. And that was my first iPhone 5C. At this point, it was really liberating for me because things was getting harder at home because I'm going to Fatima, a prestigious school, but not. You know, transport is harder because it's further away from home, which means it's, it's, it's more money. The books are expensive. You know, I'm getting older, which means I need more food to survive, you know, and to give me money every day for school was becoming a hassle, you know. So selling stuff at school really helped me in that, you know, like the basic needs. It really helped me with like the basic needs. At this point in time, my parents, I reached home one day and I just saw money on the table. It was like probably $200 or whatever, and like singles or whatever. And my mother and father was like, where is this? And I said, well, I've been selling at school. Now, they thought that I was doing something illegal, not like drugs or whatever the case may be. I say, nah, 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 it's, it's nothing like that. I just selling stuff at school, gum or whatever. And then it's like, you need to let us know. I said, okay, fine, you know? So, so they thought your boy was in the mafia, basically, you know? No, my plan in Form 3 wasn't to become this big entrepreneur or whatever. It was just still, I used to play cricket at the time. So my plan was to do Form 3, whatever, choose my, choose my subjects. I did math, add math, you know, the math and sciences. Do CXC, go into Form 6 and also get like a scholarship so I could go England and study electrical engineering and also play county cricket at the same time. So it, either way would have been like the good one, best of both worlds. But you know, life is funny. Fast forward into Form 5, this is where things really changed a lot, right? It's based off of the backbone of this. So going into Form 5, we had English literature, which is a compulsory subject. And we had a free period. She was there, but she was like, you all do whatever you want, just study, okay? So I used that time and I was just on YouTube and Google searching how to get rich, right? And everything that came up was reading books and I reading books, you know? And if you go through like the Forbes list, everyone on top there, they read books, blah, blah, blah. I hated literature, I hated lit, I hated reading. I didn't, don't, don't t tell me anything about reading, right? So I was like, ah, okay, cool. Do you wanna be rich or do you wanna be right? I rather be rich, right? Went into Google and entered how to get rich books, right? And the first book that came up was a book by Robert Kiyosaki called Rich Dad, Poor Dad, right? And I read that book on ebook. I downloaded it free on my phone on iBooks. I read that book really laid out the foundation and kind of like the, the system that we are in right now. The educational system and just not only that, but like the rat race and then the, the working, the, the environment, the history and everything like that really opened up my eyes to seeing that we are literally a cog in a machine, right? And I showed my friend Lani and he was like, and I was like, dog, you see in this? And then he was like, boy, nah, boy. So I was like, nope, nope. So I went home that day, how to make money online, whatever. And I stumbled across this business model called drop shipping, right? So basically what it is is that you are an online retailer selling pr products without holding inventory. So for example, at that point in time, we, I used to sell leggings. I used to partner with a supplier in China for like $4 per leggings or whatever. I built a website, sold it on my site for $19.99 USD, by the way. And when someone makes a purchase, I would then go and pay my supplier 4 to 5 USD. He ships all the product to the customer and I pocket the difference. Simple, right? It was actually a brand called Trendy Parks. It's still up right now. If you go on IG and enter Trendy Parks, you'll see the IG. It was like a kind of like a fashion street style type of um, flick, as they say. I used to pay Instagram influencers to try to, you know, promote the product. You know, I got no sales, no sale for about four to five months. It was horrible paying influencers uh, in different niches and spaces. I'm taking all the money from selling trying to get money to you know pay via 
PayPal to these influencers, right? Now keep in mind that's USD. So let's say it's 100 USD for a shout out or whatever, that's like six to $700 in our currency. So that was really hard to, um, to get that at that point in time, right? So I bought this course from Ty Lopez, you know, I did all that from, from other guys I've been scammed, you know, I wouldn't get into all that. But then I come to, it came t to this last bit. I was like, I'm going to try this one more time and then I'm done. I'm going to just do my schooling as regular. Okay, so it had this meme page. He had about like 1.9 million followers. Okay, I paid him around 200 USD for a shout out for 12 hours. It was a story, a post. It's like a feed and link in bio for 12 hours for 200 USD, okay? Which is around, you know, $1,300 or whatever in our currency, right? I paid him. We scheduled to launch on Sunday at 11 a.m., okay? So that Sunday morning, I went to church, right? I prayed, I asked God to just please just give me that sale. Just <laughs> sale, you know, sale. Cause I'm seeing everything on YouTube making this, we're doing that because I... I know my stuff looks good, you know, but it's, it's much more than that. So I reached home from church and slap on my Wi-Fi immediately looking for the sale. And I got zero sales, right? And that was a very heartbroken, heartbreaking moment because I'm taking all this money, not buying anything, just reinvesting it in, into well, in the website, finding finding the suppliers, you know, you know, getting certain content created, all this, this, all this effort. And um, I didn't make a single dollar in return. And it was, again, much more than that. It was because I gave up, right? So I said, this is it. So I cried, cried myself to sleep and on the chair. And then I left, I woke up, went into my bedroom, cried again and fell asleep. And when I woke up about like an hour later, I saw my first two sales, right? It was about 115 USD, okay? And also I still lost money because I paid $200 for the influencer and then you have to fulfill the product or whatever. But I didn't care. It was just knowing that this shit works. It really sparked the fire in me and everything stemmed off of that. You know, it really reminded me of one of my most famous quotes, okay, from the, the Chinese, it says, the temptation to give up is greatest right before you succeed, okay? And that was me at that point in time. And I screamed, and I was like, yes! You know, it was an amazing moment. I lost money, but just seeing that this is real, all right? So now it's like living like a, like a monk on steroids. Like, I'm not spending anything, you know, I'm eating box lunch for for breakfast for lunch for dinner i'll show you a video we was the box lunch king you know by the way i'm also leaving out a lot of stuff i tried uh, ebay drop shipping you know shopify i tried upwork freelancing okay and then going into from well from 5a i also started selling selling brownies regular brownies okay all legal okay so i did cxc got all my passes thankfully like five ones with distinctions and three twos and I got accepted into lower six form six and during that vacation I read a book by Grant Cardone called the 10x rule okay now going into the new term I that book helped me expand from literally my schools I had seven different secondary schools selling for me okay at that point in time I was making like a thousand dollars a day you know in form six they were selling brownies they were selling gummy bears and a little bit of sour face which, which was like the gum but more so the brownies the brownies and like the gummy bears used to used to used to really really sell uh, and then me in school obviously i am selling all of that but i'm also selling like sucker bag and all that type of stuff i had bags bags on me you know bags L literally bags no again i'm still 
at that point in time, my transition from influencer marketing into running ads online, Facebook ads, what that is, obviously, if you scroll on your feed on Instagram, on Facebook, you would see ads, sponsored, sponsored posts. So I transitioned into promoting my stores, which required a lot of money, you know, um, spending like 100 USD, 200 USD a day trying to make things work. Okay. And I was always breaking even, not making money, like breaking even, not making money, making a little bit of money, breaking even. So it was just all in the process of trying to figure things out along the way. Right. And then a guy, he, well, he went to Woodbrook, he got suspended because of, because of like selling. And also I got in trouble as well because I didn't get, you know, so I could not have sell anymore. So that was very heartbreaking. But, and then I came to school and then it was like, bro, dog, where the sours, where the gummies, where the brownies, you know? And then I turned and I watched them. You know what I told them? I'm not leaving. I'm not fucking leaving! The show goes on, right? And again, at this point in time as well, where we lived at the time in Paramin, we were renting, right? And the guy who we rented from, his children had gotten older and they needed a place to stay. So we had to move out. And at the same time, my grandfather, he did, he did die a few yeah, earlier. So we got, to, we spoke with the family and we got to move in there. The bad part about that is that it was further away from where we lived in Parman, higher, higher, higher up, which tends to be, you know, when not good electricity, water supply is bad, you know, which right now has actually gotten way better, but at the, at the point in time, the electricity was bad, water was bad, transport was hard, and also more expensive as well. I had to walk up and down that hill, you know, and especially with my gears for training, my school clothes, my Kamala laptop that I still had at the point in time, you know, the Kamala laptop, you know what I'm talking about, right? And plus all the goods, and I'm sweating, I'm drenched up, it was, it was horrible. And using all this money to reinvest into a dream that only you have and not making any money, by the way. Like you're breaking even just, you know, and you're, you're seeing that it could work. I scale, I scale the, score, the store to about two or three K USD a month. I think I have some, some screenshots there, but it's all breaking even, barely profitable, profitable by like, you know, $200 or something like that, you know, so like it's nothing much. USD by the way, so like a thousand dollars an hour money. But I can't leave school and say, okay, I'm making a thousand dollars a month. You know, it, it, it's not making any sense. So where it got hard is because I'm in upper six now. Everyone is planning to go to university, UE, all over the place. And I'm here. I haven't signed up for anything. Okay. I haven't si signed up for anything. And like, bro, like you're finishing school in a few months. You need to figure out what you're gonna do. You know, how are you gonna make mo money while you try to figure it out, okay? So I decided to try to reach out to local restaurants. I tried reaching out to car dealerships, gyms, real estate agents. Um, I reached out to dentists who I found out that after two months wasting my time that uh, you can't advertise locally for, um, for dentists in certain places because of like some law, I don't know. Um, but like one of the guys, he was opening a practice in Guyana, so he was, I was looking to helping. And then eventually I reached out to um, restaurants. I cold I call, call them. Uh, I used to stutter left, right, and center, you know, because I'm so anxious. And so I'll show a short clip of me making a call. Horrible. Call um, a car dealership called. Well, not Caesar, but CK, let's call them CK Imports from okay, 7536871. Let's go. His name is Kwame. Hey, come back on me. You see what he's saying? You know what I start there, so. Well, um,
Hi, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Andel. I'm is Kwame there by chance? Yeah, my name is Kwame. Oh, okay, great. Hi, Kwame. My name is Andel. Firstly, um, you don't know me and I don't know you, right? Now, the reason for the call um, is because we specialize in helping car dealership owners build systems that gives them a, a constant flow at least every month now through funnel building and advanced Facebook marketing. Um, you know, and we thought that we'd actually help you guys out by having more of those. So we're offering free of charge an in-depth building of a sales funnel and a digital marketing audit that shows you how you can get 20% increase in your sales in 60 days. Again, Kwame, this is completely free. Hoping you know that you're actually interested in online marketing and growing your brand. Sound fair enough? And then it was April 20th or 19th, I believe, of 2019. I signed my first client. It was a, a restaurant for 500 USD a month. Um, that only lasted for one month. You know, um, that was on my end because I, I set the expectations wrong. You know, I think I signed them on like a Tuesday and then on like a, a Thursday, they're like messaging me like, Yo, where are the people? I'm like, bro, it's been two days, but you know, and then I finished school. I finished school, income back to zero, everything back to zero. I'm learning some skills here. Um, I'm like, okay, how do I make money? So the little bit of money that I had left, I tried to run ads marketing like my brownie business to get some sales. I used to charge like $100 for like a box of brownies for like 15 brownies or so, something like that. And then I had someone selling in a, in a female school for me. And I used to meet her after school. And it was really weird because I'm like, everybody in school uniform and I'm just looking like this, this big fella. So it was really, I was feeling real awkward, you know? So that helped me. You know who you are? Thank you so much, right? So I use that, you know, to travel. I'm traveling down south. I'm going in the east. I'm going down... San Fernando, you know, to having meetings with individuals, you know, trying to sell them on my services, okay? And up until it was, it got so bad where on my way back home, my mom and my sister, they have like a little shop in Fatima Junction up in Parham in there. And every time I go there, because I have, I have to pass there to go home. So when I go there, they will ask me, you get true, boy. You get true. You get true, and the answer was always no, 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 ma, no, no, no. So, and I could see like on their face, it was like, you know, like, this really going to work, boy. You know, what are you doing? So, what really? And then this one time, like my mom, aside from everyone, aside aside from my kill friend who had like the most most faith in me. Above, above everyone else. My mom was second. So I spoke to my mom and then she was like, hey boy, I get you. I was like, nah. And she was like, I think it's time to get a job, boy. You know, let's forget it. You know, so hearing her say that broke me. I, I could have crawl in a hole and just bawl and just cry. You know, so it was horrible. I walked out that store, that little mall, mall. I walked up and I called, I think she told me, I called Mommy Gloria, which is an old lady in the church that we're in. And we started to pray basically, you know, and I'm there, I'm on the phone, I'm crying, I'm my tears crying. And I'm crying my eyes out there because I just, point in time is like what are you doing right you did you did well in form five cxc you got all the passes whatever went form six you basically failed form six you never showed up for your mock exams you got threes fours and fives in your in your keep results you were going so good what are you doing with your life okay you threw it away for what this false internet thing you see in people to, to win abroad you can't do that what make you think that you're doing that? You know? So, you're a small fry from the Caribbean, or they broke. You know, what can you do? So, I'm telling myself all these things, and it's like, I wasted my time, you know? 
I get I'm crying, crying, and yet still, I don't know. I, it's like I had no choice. What else would you do? You know, and then I had this one meeting and it was October 2019. I'll never forget it. I signed my other restaurant client for $4,500. Okay, and within that first 30 days, I made them an extra $91,000, 30-45 days, with about four to, f four to five K in ad spend. So it was like a, like a 15X ROI on the ad spend return. I have, a, I have an interview with myself and the manager of the restaurant. You see it on my profile. And then I got paid $9,500 for our next month with them. And I was like, okay, this is, this is getting serious, right? Um, made them some money again. And things went a little haywire there because, you know, there's like, hey, it's only you alone. You know, can you? It's only you alone. You don't have anyone on your team. You just finished school. So I was like, bro, it doesn't matter. Business is business. You know what I mean? So it fell through. I went into other restaurants. I want to give a quick story. I went, to, I went to a restaurant in the East. I wouldn't, obviously, I wouldn't say who it is. I had my school ring at the time that I sadly lost. But anyway. And so I'm in the meeting. I'm showing him my results. It was he and his wife. I'm showing him my results and everything that I could do for him and what he could actually make with this. Okay? I even offered him a free trial. 30 days free trial. I'm so, I'm a youth man. Wanted to prove myself and my worth to him. Okay? He watched me, saw my ring and was like, oh, you went Fatima? I was like, yeah, I did. He's like, oh, how long you finish? And I'm like, oh my God, no. Why are you asking me? Well, like in my mind, I'm like, why are you asking me that? And I was like, hmm, six months ago, and he was like, oh, you're a baby. And then the entire conversation just shifted. I could, he started to speak down on me, basically, you know, like I'm a little, you know, without, without saying it. And um, I just ended the meeting. I was like, you know what? I wish you and your wife the best. You know, so I went downstairs. I went into the bathroom. I started to cry even more again. It was in McDonald's or whatever. Because, you see, at this point in time, I'm trying to use, it, use this money to run, still run ads for my brownie business so I can live, okay? And, I'm, and as I said, I'm spending money traveling down south, down east, down west, wherever. I live in Parman. If you know, Parman is very expensive to um, travel there, right? So we're going into J January of 2020, and I had to, I made, up, I made a decision. I'm done with local businesses. I'm going to go up, I'm going to go abroad. Okay. And find businesses who are, and see what I could do. I, I can make more money. I can make foreign currency and so on. So I did what we call the three hours, you know, you retreat, regroup and you reattack. Okay. It's you, you, you never surrender. Okay. You retreat, you regroup again, and then you reattack. So going into January, at this time I'm broke, broke zero, you know, my dad, I can't get a c credit card from him because he's like a farmer and it's very hard. Um, uh, uh, my mom, she doesn't have like a pay slip and all that, so it was hard. So I asked my, it was from my brother-in-law, okay, the credit card limit was 11500 or so. I bought a course from, from this guy called Kai Bax, you know, who I have an, an interview with as well. I'll leave you a link in the description within, with, with our interview as well. Okay, go here. And I paid around, I think it was like 497 USD, four to five grand or whatever in our currency. I paid that on the credit card, okay? On the credit card. And I'm also using money from the credit card to run ads for my brownie business to survive. So basically I'm using debt. I'm using the bank's money, okay? So, so this is how I end up in 9.6K in debt. And I'll show you an image of me. This was January 15th. I was sitting in front of Island Bay and Grill by Roxy, the in St. James. And although I was crying, I, I've cried a lot in my life, but anyway. Um, yeah. Although I was crying, at that point in time, was, I took that photo of me because it was like, enough is enough. 
and I don't know how, but I'm going to make this work. I'm going to make something of myself. I'm going to make this work. Okay, all the naysayers, whatever, you know, you're too young, whatever. I even had like a restaurant owner, you know, at the charge like $11,000. And then she told and she told me like, that's a manager's salary, you know? And I'm like, it was crazy. I'm making a restaurant $100,000 a month and then you're talking about, you know, a manager's salary. So I wasn't, I wasn't like respected. You know, so I knew that I will be respected, right? So then it took me three months you know, until like ap again April of 2020 until I signed my first client in the UK for 1100 pounds. It was a luxurious handbag brand in England called Kerry Kit England, okay, for 1100 pounds. And within like two to three months, I made them an extra 111,000 pounds from like 11 to 12k pounds ad spend. Basically like a 10x ROI from my efforts. And I also got a percentage of that as well. And that was when things took off. That same year, like two to three months later, my parents' birthday, it is in, in July. They have never been to Tobago. So I surprised them with a little vacation. I have a clip of myself handing them like the tickets. You're going, you're going, you're going to Vigo. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to Vigo for the weekend, sir. You're going to Vigo for the weekend. You're going to Vigo? Yeah, you're going to Vigo for the weekend. And that was amazing because I carried them, I carried my girlfriend who's not my fiance soon to be wife and I also carried you know Kermit as well which is my god brother you know so and that was an amazing experience that you will ever experience as a child seeing your your parents happy enjoying themselves on their birthday you know that was really really amazing spending that time with them you know and with your loved ones was like really really amazing now you know now from there I then worked with some of the industry leading top e-commerce brands in this space such as Agent Nutter, Mini Beast, Matcha, Skull Shaver, I, I could go on. I will, and some of which I still work with t to this day. And then in late 2021, 20, I started to go to the gym. You know, I was 159 pounds. Now I'm like 186 pounds. I uh, work with my trainer, Michael, who is now my closest friend. And then I also bought my first car in cash that year as well. That was amazing, right? And then going into the other year, which was 2022 in January, I took my kill to Sandals Resort in Jamaica for our anniversary. We spent over 52K on that trip. It was the most, uh, from, you know, like the horses to they have an sign with your name on it to, to the live performances it was it was all amazing all inclusive and all because of this this internet thing and then at the end of 2022 i moved out to my own apartment i moved out of parliament to now i live in a, a gated area in a three bedroom apartment you know i have my my office room and so on and then in early 2023 which was around april i hit my highest month with my agency which was around 33k USD. Uh, that month, I made over like 90% in profit, which was like 200k uh, in our currency. Uh, two months later, um, I spent over uh, 100k being a part of a larger community. You know, to overall help me help me grow my agency to over 100k USD a month. Okay, I went to Spain, Marbella, Spain, being a part of crazy experience. Flew business class, you know, so was a part of a $14 million USD villa, which is like over $100 million in our money. You know, like the food, the, the Lambos, the yachts, the food, the overall, the people, the vibe, and you seeing what's possible and meet, meeting new people on your level and even higher, you know, that you can now call friends and call upon them at, at any point in time it was truly the greatest feeling you would ever feel. I also started a second ad agency in the solar space. Okay, I got engaged a few months later to the love of my life, as you can see. And lastly, I won my first 
professional kickboxing fight, you know. So I am now one and O, oh, okay, and I am now retired. I can now say I am retired, undefeated, okay. So speak to me nice. Now, I don't want to sit here and be like, it's all good, it's all sunshine and rainbows. It's not until you actually see the behind the scenes, okay? It's not always like that, but in the end, it's always worth it. You know, my overall goal for this video is for you to meet me virtually. Shake, shake, shake your hand and for me to say, hi there, my name is Andel Nicholas. Welcome to my life, welcome to my story. I hope you stick around because I believe that I am going to do some incredible things with my life. And I wanna be a part of the beacon of light, sharing inspiration, sharing hope for you to go forth and fulfill your dreams in, in whatever aspect of it. I have nothing to sell you, okay? Unless if you're a local business in Trinidad or in the Caribbean, doing over 100K a month, Okay, if you do know one million a month, that would be like amazing and ideally. Okay, and let's make some, some money together. Okay, so yeah, it's been a pleasure meeting you. If you see me in real life, say what is he seen, and I'll see you in the next one.